just lining up the shot, and it's found a way through to here. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, what a wonderful cool finish. What a goal from Ross Barkley. And it must be for Enketia, the kind of chances strikers dream about. Now this is Cesar Aspilicueta again for Giroud. It's Arsenal, a flying start. Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea and both Mikel Arteta and Frank Lampard are just one game from glory in what are their first seasons in charge. Hello and welcome into FA Cup Countdown Live. Wherever you are watching us, let me just tell you a few more ways to do so. We'll be taking you all the way up to kickoff, which you can see on ESPN Plus, live and exclusive this game between Arsenal and Chelsea. You can stream us on Twitter, the ESPN Twitter page, the ESPN app. You can also do so on ESPN FC's YouTube page and its Facebook page too. Now, this year's edition of the FA Cup has been branded the Heads Up FA Cup, and that is an initiative focusing on mental health in reaction to the coronavirus pandemic. Very important initiative, also urging players to take as much care of their mental health as they do of their physical health. I'm Kay Murray. I'm joined today by Alexis Nunes and Don Hutchison. They're in Wembley, well, outside Wembley at the moment for us. We'll be hearing from them in just a moment. We also have a man who knows very well about the excitement and nerves that come with an FA Cup final. It's Shaka Hislop and he's here now to talk through the lineups which are in already. Not too many surprises with Arsenal's lineup as it stands. Very much the same as that uh, lineup that we did see in the semi where they beat Manchester City 2 0, keeping a clean sheet as well. Back three there, it's Rob Holden though coming in for the injured Mustafi. In the midfield four, you can see Maitland Nal, Shaka Ceballos, and Hector Bellerin. And up front, firepower from the likes of Nicolas Pepe, Alexandra Lacazette, and Obama Yang. Now, we will be hearing a lot more about that forward line from John Hutchison. With you, though, Shaka, I'd very much like to focus on the back line because with David Luiz, well, we never know what we're going to get, do we? He's at the heart of the defence here. And it has to be said that even though he had that awful game against City in the league earlier this year, he completely redeemed himself in the semi. What do you think we'll see from him today? Well, that, that's a big question with, with David Luiz. Always is. Which David Luiz is going to show up? He has been an outstanding defender at various times during, during the course of his career. He's also left you scratching your heads far, far too many uh, of those uh, at times and, and sometimes during the same game. Now, the thing for Arsenal, especially with this front three, is they're asking the back five to pretty much stay at home. You'll get some support from, from the wing backs, but, but not an awful lot. Let the front three do what they do up front. Everybody else sit back, play the other side of the ball, and provide that protection for, for Martinez. Now, as long as David Luiz does that, as long as he doesn't go wandering into midfield and find himself out of position and making some of the head-scratching decisions that he's become known for, he can be a very good defender. Mikel Altata is asking him to do that, to be that person today. Don't go wandering. Just keep it simple. Give us what you did in the... In the
and no doubt his goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez will be asking the same of him as well just a few technical issues there it seems with Shaka but we will hopefully hear back from him in just a moment when it comes to Chelsea's lineup as well well that remains unchanged from their game against Wolves last weekend that was a very important game for them in the Premier League when we know they had to get the result to ensure that they secured that top four football for next season no Kepa that means once again that was a controversial decision that he was not included in that final game by Frank Lampard what we will do now is get some reaction to both of these lineups we'll send it over to London with Alexis Nunes and Don Hutchison tell us what you think guys Thanks so much, Kay. And exactly, it's not the best day for a good hair day, as you can probably see. <laughs> but you know what? It is a beautiful day for football and a beautiful day Stunning. for the FA Cup final. Look at a casual yet dapper looking Don <laughs> Hutchison. But Don, we heard a little bit from Shaka there. Now we know the Chelsea team as well, unchanged. And I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Exactly. Um, I'm not surprised what Frank's done. Unchanged against Wolves in a clean sheet. He's not had too many of them this season. So that's been the biggest worry when you've watched Chelsea this season, Alexis, is are they capable of keeping clean sheets? Can they give the opposition hardly any chances? In the Wolves game, it was a tight game. They got the goals just before half time, which give them confidence to then get that result in the second half. So completely you know, and utterly not surprised whatsoever with what Frank's done. He's got a strong bench if he needs to turn to his bench as well. So it's a positive start for, uh, for Frank Lampard and his lineup. Well, our good friend Stuart Robson, of course, has been here with us. We were chatting to him off camera earlier on, and I keep saying he said something pretty interesting in the sense that Arsenal are a cup team. Yep. You know, they're a team that can at least string it together on the day and for momentous occasions just like this one. So how comfortable will Chelsea feel going into this one, or has that kind of made it a level playing field between these two sides? I think it's turned into a very close game. Um, I've got a feeling how the game's going to going to pan out after the first 20 minutes. I can imagine Arsenal being really disciplined. As Shaka said there, they'll stay in their shape. The back three and the two wing-backs will stay compact. Um, Sabias and Xhaka will not move from midfield. They play counter-attack and football. They'll get everyone behind the ball. Chelsea, I would imagine, in the first 20 minutes will dominate possession. Then can Arsenal hit them on the counter? Mm. They've got serious pace at the top end of the pitch. We think Lacazette's going to lead the line through the middle, Bamiang off the left-hand side and Pepe. So if they're disciplined and the midfield's good in their passing, they can certainly create some chances. Well, you mentioned a name right there that we definitely have to stick a pin there and talk about him, and that is Aubameyang, because how instrumental has he been for Arsenal? Like we, Kay was talking about that semi-final against Manchester City, he said Arsenal 2-0 Man City, but I almost wanted to say Aubameyang 2, Man City 0, because yeah. we really saw how much of a talisman he is for the Gunners. How much do Arsenal need him to put together a performance like he did in the semi-finals again tonight? Yeah, he's stardust, isn't he? When you watch him, he can drift through games, actually, with... You know, with ease, and he can he can turn up at the right position at the right time. And you know, he's a striker by nature, um, but he plays off the left hand side, and that's very comfortable to him. But his first instinct, whenever Arsenal get to the top end of the pitch, he either takes the ball to feet, but he's clever at running in behind because he's super quick. And then look out for his runs. When he starts on the left-hand side, he makes those runs from out to in, and he goes on them diagonal runs. So he'll get close to, La to Lacazette. He's got to make sure in himself, Lacazette, that his holder plays good. If it's good, and he brings Aubameyang into the game, and that's where they're certainly going to be strong. Just, of course, one more question on Aubameyang, because we know that his name has been plastered all over the headlines in the newspapers here, because we know that there's less than a year left on his contract. Given the fact that we've spoken, you know, to a lot of analysts and reporters here and they have mentioned that Arsenal may be feeling it from the coronavirus pandemic in terms of, you know, financially speaking, and Aubameyang allegedly asking for 250000 a week and another three-year contract, that means that Arsenal need European football for this one. So surely they also need to step up for him tonight, right? Oh, they will. Um, you know, that's why, that's why I said this is super important for both teams. But more importantly, I think, for Mikel Arteta, because it gives him the chance to say to the board, Look, I've won an FA Cup in the first year I've been here and there's been no Meza Ozil. That's just a bizarre scenario. He's out in Turkey at the moment and he's not been playing football, which is bizarre, picking up 300 plus a week. It's incredible. And only at a club like Arsenal could that culture happen. Um, so it's really important that if Arsenal lift that trophy, it gives me like Eta, Arteta the ammunition then to go to the board and say, listen, you know, let's give him the three years. Let's try and build a side around him. I know the age is against Aubameyang, but when you look at his numbers, Alexis, it's every single season he's close to 30 goals. He does it. He's consistent. You know, he does it from that left-hand side. He does it when he plays through the middle. Um, he's, as I said, he's their stardust player. He's, he's the player that they lean to more than any other. If they're going to score goals and win games and go deep into European competitions in seasons to come, it has to be with Orba in the side. I absolutely agree with you there on this one. Well, let's go back to Kay now, because I believe you're going to speak about another questionable 
I suppose, issue that one of the teams have to deal with, and that's Keparisa Valaga with Shaka. Absolutely, Alexis. Thanks so much. Yes, Shaka, don't worry. We didn't drop you here. Maybe you dropped us, but we didn't drop you. I like was Frank... wondering for a moment. <laughs> not like Frank Lampard <laughs> dropped Kepper in the last game. Now, he's not featured in this game. I don't know how much to read into it because Caballero, obviously, in the semi final, too. But there is still many questions to be asked because for you, who is the better goalkeeper, Kepper or Caballero? Right now, uh, Caballero is, is the more reliable. Caballero has been a number two for, for some time. And he's come in and, and deputized, deputized to, to very good effect, whether at Chelsea or Manchester City before that. What he's not is an out-and-out -out number one. Frank somehow has made him his number one out-and-out, uh, his out-and-out -out number one. We've seen him in the cup uh, previously, but now all of a sudden he's played in the league, so no real surprise to see him play, play in the cup final today. Uh, that raises huge questions about Kepper, about his future, especially considering the price tag, over £70 million, a world record fee paid for, for a goalkeeper, yet he can't get in ahead of somebody who has been a number two for the better part of four years. Yeah, it's definitely one worth watching there. I uh, just wanted to ask you as well, Shaka, when you look at the two defences for these two sides, it's fair to say, now we know the firepower on both sides is definitely not, not left begging, mm. but definitely two of the shakier defences among the top teams in England. Whose is the shakiest? Um, listen, p potentially, I think Arsenal's is, is the shakiest. But you saw Arsenal uh, at their best in, in the previous round when you play with the, the two wing-backs in, in, in Bellerin and, and Maitland-Niles, who will be today, and they just offer some support to the front three. You leave the front three, uh, Lacazette, Aubameyang and Pepe up front to do their damage up there. Everybody else stay the other side of the ball and protect Martinez. As long as everybody keeps their head screwed on, as long as David Luiz doesn't go wandering, as long as between Maitland-Niles Maitland and Bellerin, they don't go forward too much. Um, you can get a better defensive performance out of Chelsea's at the back. The issue for Chelsea on that, looking at that same kind of formation, is who they have up front in, in Giroud. And as, as, as good as, as Pulisic has been, you do have to get better support from the midfield and even your wing backs. And that leaves them and that makes them a little bit more vulnerable. Yeah, many eyes on Christian Pulisic today because if he is to go on and win this trophy, he will become only the second U.S. player to win the FA Cup and the first outfield player to do so. The first was Tim Howard back in 2004. So it's only right that we caught up with Christian Pulisic before this game to hear more about it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, the positive that I took out of it, obviously, especially after coming off an injury, a pretty long injury where I was just uh, getting back to, to full strength and then kind of the lockdown started. It just gave me that extra time to, to really make sure I was 100% fit, ready to go and, and kind of put me on level playing field once everyone was back because everyone you know, hadn't been playing for a while. So um, it definitely gave me a good chance and kind of just, uh, yeah, just, refer, just a quick refresh and, and just ready to go again. So it did help me. I was just looking at your Premier League number this morning, 19 starts, nine goals, four assists. Are you happy with your contribution overall? Do, do you judge it in, in numbers like that? I mean, of course, there, there's more to the game than, than just numbers. But, uh, you know, I'm happy. You know, it's also, it is a big part of the game. You know, I'm an attacking player. I want to score goals and create goals. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with my, uh, with my contribution. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of improvements to make as well. I know you get. I know you've been asked a lot about the Eden Hazard comparison, and obviously coming in when he left. Did that comparison sort of annoy you at any point, or did it? Was it a factor for you at all, or was it just sort of noise around you that you kind of had to put to one side and get on with? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely just noise. I mean, people, you know, people love to make comparisons. Uh, you know, they do it in all sports. I think um, that that that's just how it is, and I understand that. But uh, you know, never was I was I looking to compare myself to him, or you know, trying to you know bring what, what he, you know, what he had and, and what, what it's like. I never really looked at it like that. I've always just kind of focused on myself and, uh, yeah, wanting to do, to do my best because that's, uh, that's what I'm here to do. I read that before the Europa League final, you were exchanging messages with uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Um, I just wondered if you'd maybe spoken to him this week ahead of the cup final. No, I mean, we'll always, we'll always be good friends. Obviously, I've played together with, uh, with him for, for a long time. Um, right now, we're definitely, we're definitely focused up and uh, we both we both want to win. So 
it's going to be it's going to be a good battle and uh yeah we'll obviously be you know not so much on the pitch but you know we'll always be friends off he's had a fantastic season again with Arsenal do, do you see him as being sort of the main threat from Arsenal this weekend his, his goal scoring ability yeah no I obviously uh, you know I know him quite well he's uh he's incredible the way he gets in uh, in good areas and he's, he's always dangerous uh so we're definitely gonna have to be cautious of that um and yeah obviously they're they have some other good players but uh, he's one guy that you definitely have to look out for Champions League qualification was obviously hugely important. What would it mean to you, though, to, to win a trophy in your first season? That would be incredible. Uh, you know, with how this year has gone, uh, like I said, a lot of ups and downs. I think there's no better way to, to finish off the year than, win, than winning a trophy, you know, with the guys. And, you know, that's something that, that's something that, that we really want. And uh, obviously, that'll just be another thing to just remember from, from my first year. And obviously, that would be an incredible achievement. So, yeah, we all, we all want to finish strong. It really would. What a season it has been for Christian Pulisic. And Chaka, I'd just like to ask you about this because it's not just that he's a US star, it's that he's a, a prominent team and that he's a really prominent player on that team as well. How important is it for the US market to have a player like Christian Pulisic in the public eye like this? It's, it's vitally important, both for the growth of the game, um, in particular domestic talent here in the US, and and similarly right now for Chelsea because he's not just a prominent player for, for Chelsea at the moment. He is, without question, their best. He is the player who makes things happen for, for Chelsea and he needs to be at his best if, if Chelsea are to go on and, and win this FA Cup. But for the bigger picture in terms of, of US soccer and what it means in terms of their own development is that he is very much one of, one of their own. He learned the, the fundamentals of, of the game here in the US I know he went on and, and honed in school, his, his skills in, in Germany with, with Dortmund before making that, that move to Chelsea. But he continues to be not just the face of U.S. soccer, um, but their most important player. Not be, just because of his, his presence in, in, with, with Chelsea and Stamford Bridge, but because of what he means to U.S. men's national team. The experience, the, the presence and the experience that, that he now brings. And they say that comparison is the thief of joy. So I'm going to get more from you in just a minute, Shaka. But what I'd like to do is get Don Hutchison's thoughts because I think that Christian Pulisic is a player that he is very much an admirer of. What do you make of those Eden Hazard comparisons? I think I, I think they're justified. I think when Eden Hazard came into the Premier League, his stats weren't probably anywhere ne any better than Christian Pulisic's. I think they were probably about the same K. Um, and this is a player I've been following for a long time. Um, in, in Borussia Dortmund, he was performing at the very highest level. He got his big money move to Chelsea. It took him a little bit of time to settle and to grow into his own confidence. Um, and he was battling for a first team place. Obviously coming to England in the Premier League was totally brand new for him. So you had to deal with the physicality of the Premier League. Um, and then since his, his confidence seems to be back, you know, he's getting on the ball now. He's quick, he's doing the things that he was doing when he was at Dortmund where he can take players on for fun. His balance is excellent. He can go on his left side, his right side. He's got a turn of pace as well. His close control is immaculate. And, you know, you'll see him in the future. You'll see him in, you know, it might be today. It might be in next season. You'll see his numbers start to rise. And you'll see a more consistent Christian Pulisic because he's got all the tools. And I, for one, I absolutely love watching the kid play. I think he's an immense talent. Yeah, definitely one of the best players since the restart as well, if not one of the best players in the Premier League since the restart. Now, we thought we'd have a bit of fun before this game and do our own take on it. A simulator, if you will, a virtual star. We got on FIFA 20, we pitted Arsenal against Chelsea and we found out who won. So it's over to you, Mark Donaldson, with this game. Welcome to Wembley Stadium and to the last remaining game of the 139th staging of the FA Cup. It's a repeat of the final of 2017, Arsenal versus Chelsea. A quiet opening to this one, pretty cagey. This is N'Golo Kante for Rhys James. Olivier Giroud, good save Martinez. Managed to get enough purchase on that one. However, the Argentine up to the task. Into the second half. Jorginho for Willian. A bit scrappy here. Obama Yang. Willick. Very scrappy. Abraham. Willian. Abraham! 1 0! The super sub. Just on. Gets away from Davi Luiz and the deadlock's broken. 
77th minute, Aubameyang. Oh, goalkeeper! Lacazette equalize! Willie Caballero could not keep it out, and we go to penalties. Nicola Pepe against Caballero, who makes amends. Tammy Abraham, 1 0. Pierre Emery Aubameyang. A little help from the post. Willian tied at one apiece. Still tied at one apiece. Good save. Lacazette. Arsenal ahead, 2-1. Cesar Azpilicueta, the captain, off the bar. Chelsea still behind. David Luiz. Yikes. This is Ross Barkley to level things up, does so. 2-2. Granit Xhaka with Arsenal's fifth penalty. 3-2, nice. Kept it low. And Marcus Alonso now has to score. Emiliano Martinez is the hero! And a 14th FA Cup for Arsenal, and their fourth in seven years! All right, so the FIFA simulator there giving Arsenal the wow. win. Risque, a bit yeah. risque. You know, I think only one of our FC analysts, and that's Stuart Robson, actually chose Arsenal for this one, but I think he's trying to have them lift his ban. Crawling, isn't he? He's trying to crawl it, yeah, you know what it massive. is. But usually if my brother gets a massive win on FIFA, he won't stop talking about it for weeks, probably even months. Well, if you just add maybe 30 years to my brother's age, you get Don <laughs> Hutchison. And Hutch had a big win in our ESPN FC quiz in lockdown against none other than Craig Burley. That's not really something to brag about, but for some reason he keeps bragging about I'm it. So it. guess what? We're putting you through another no. quiz. An FA Cup quiz right here, right now, on the spot. Don't be mean. Ready? Yes, I think so. Question number one. In 2014 and 2015, Arsenal won the FA Cup two seasons in a row, but who did they beat in those two finals? They beat Hull. There we go. When Hull were winning and should have won the game. One and more. And the other one was Aston Villa. Boom, he got it. Do you know what? I wonder if you were Googling before this. No, I haven't seen him, have I? All right, well, let's go to the next question. Two years ago, Chelsea beat Manchester United 1-0 in the final. Who scored that lone goal? That was a penalty, and it yeah. was Hazard. No, I think he's cheating. I don't how, know how, how can I cheat? How can I cheat? Unreal. He was absolutely sweating bricks. Well, I was. He, even came. <laughs> he might be am. sweating now. I think it's just the sun that's come out. Last year... Manchester City tied the record for an FA Cup final win, beating Watford 6-0. Who scored their sixth goal in the 87th minute? Nah, how am I going to get this? I'll give you one guess and maybe I could give you a hint. I'll go ridiculously left field and I'll just say Phil Foden. Oh my goodness, no. I'll no. give you one more goal. Go on. He was born in the same country and city I was born in. Wow. Uh, Shows how much you know where I was born. <laughs> no, pass. Raheem Sterling. Sterling. He was born in Kingston, Jamaica, where I'm I born. didn't know he was born there. I thought he was a London boy. No, alas, there you go. He's one of our own. Moving on. Who was in goal for West Ham? This is a great one. Go on. When Steven Gerrard scored that Easy. 91st equaliser. Easy. Equalizer. Shaka Hislop. Easy. Shaka Hislop. Oh. How bad was he there, by the way, Jeez, getting down? Ages. That was probably the most Shaka-strophic Shaka has ever been in his uh, life. He's like an old man getting down to that oh, side. Oh, stop it. He's, he's, you know, that's my West Indian brother. Like fine wine, Shaka. Final question, God, three. which is more like a challenge. Spell Kepa Arisavalaga. K E P A. <laughs> yeah. A double R. I Z. A B L. Sorry, B A L I G A. No! It's Balaga. Balaga, not so, Balaga. Uh, exactly. There ah. you go, not Baliga. Close. Come on. Close enough. Do you know what? I mean, I Bluetooth high five you because we're social distancing. Shh. But you did very well. He basically only got. 
two wrong. Three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got three two right. wrong. Yeah. Three, there you go. Yeah. Three right. Focus on the positives. Three okay, right. we'll focus on the positives because you know what? He's getting up there in age and he needs as much positives as he can get. But anywho, speaking of positives, let's go back to studio with Kay because I can't believe Kay has some very, very intense questions from our fans for Shaka Hislop. Plus, he has to explain that Shaka Strophic excuse of a save. Shaka, I'm on your side here. Let's have two against two, shall we? Do you want to? Do you want to? Thank have you very much, to reply? I I have nothing to say to Alexis and Don. Nothing at all. All right. <laughs> well, we'll leave it at that. Then we'll see what you've got to say to these in the tunnel questions that have been sent in in their droves by you guys. Right. Grant Mulligan's in. He says, "Is Lacazette right when he says that a trophy will save Arsenal's season?" And if so, isn't that just admitting that they aren't a top club anymore? Well, they're, they're not. I, I, Arsenal are not in a position to, to finish top four. Um, they've become, as George Robson rightly points out, very much a, a cup team. And if they go on and, and win this FA Cup, yes, I, I think it's a good season for, for Mikel Arteta uh, and one that they can build on. I, I still feel that the distance between them and the top four, even as it exists, regardless of what happens today against Chelsea, is, is still a, a bit of a gulf that, that they, have to, they have to somehow negotiate. They're a cup team, not a league team. They, they need this more than Chelsea do. Uh, yeah, they absolutely do. So let me ask you a question about Chelsea. It's from a Chelsea fan called Sahil. He said, do you think Chelsea invested too much into attack that it might be bad for our defence? Um, no, I think Chelsea needed to invest in, in attack in, in the way that they did. Um, as much as to start this season, you saw Tammy Abraham come out the blocks flying, as, as, as did Mason Mount. And then uh, Hudson Adoy, given how he finished up last season, I know he had the injury, maybe you were expecting a, a little bit more. And then the uncertain start of, of Christian Pulisic, who's established himself, as we were, we were speaking about before, as Chelsea's most important player. You understand why Frank Lampard wanted to, to strengthen in, in that department with an, an, an aging Olivier Giroud being their, their main focus. I still think they've got a lot of work to do at the back as well, none more so than between the sticks, again, as we've been discussing. So I, there's work for, Chelsea, for, for Frank Lampard to be done, but I think he'll start addressing those issues in the coming weeks. Right now, he's got to focus on this game and what, he's, what he has at hand. Yep, certainly does well. We'll send it back to the mean girls at Wembley for their in the tunnel questions. Alexis and Don picking on my shaka. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of mean, <laughs> let me just tell you something. I think what? I was holding my cue cards a little too open like that because that's probably why Don Hutchison just admitted that he aced that little quiz right there. Oh, gonna... Aston Villa. Oh, what a bad man he is. Never Anyways, let's get some questions for you here from the from fans. You, Alexis. <laughs> Shaka, you know I got you. You're my, you're my family. You're my family. No, 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 don't, know, don't try that. Do you too think... late. <laughs> Jeez, and ages. Shaka is going Wrap it up, Shaka. Wrap it up. You're living in the Let's past. Let's get S-backs those questions to Don. He's asking, do you think Arsenal will be able to keep Obama Yang if they lose this game? Oh, what a question that is. I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. Oh, fair enough. Alex Coppola wants to know, old Wembley or new Wembley? And old why? Wembley. Old Wembley. Why? I never got to why? see Why? Because Wembley. I scored the winning goal against England there. Oh, there Simple. you go. There you go. And anything against England for Scotland is... Exactly. Oh, Stevie Nicol would love that answer from you. Love I'm that Greg. answer. Well, I think we should probably head back to a crying shaka over there. But before we go, quick prediction. Let me know what's going to happen because we've heard the fire going off, so we know we're so close to kick off. We're about four minutes to kick off. I said the other day 3-2, so I'm just going to waver slightly and say 3-1, three, 3-2 three, Chelsea. 3132 Chelsea. All right, there you have it. Thank you so much, Don. As always, Kay will get back to you and get if we could get a prediction from a very sensitive Shaka. <laughs> I don't think he was sensitive. I think he is within his rights to be a little bit upset about this one. Hey, Shaka, let's get your predictions, shall we? And Thank if we have time, much, I will give them some difficult questions. But what do you think of this game? Is it going to go past 90 minutes? Uh, no, I, I think Chelsea go on and, and win this in, in 90 minutes. I think this is a very good, big game for, for Arsenal. You've seen them kind of um, wilt a little bit under, under the pressure, especially against teams at the top of the table. 
that FA Cup semi-final apart, I think Chelsea pose a very different problem for, for Arsenal. They're not going to leave themselves as open to the counter-attack as, as City did. As a result, I, I just feel Chelsea are the better of the two teams and they get it done in 90 minutes despite the simulator sitting on the fence and going for a draw. So there's the predictions from our pundits for this one. We hope you've enjoyed this fun preview show here on ESPN. You can see the game live in its entirety. It's Arsenal against Chelsea in the FA Cup final over on ESPN+. Plus. It is one not to be missed, so we'll see you over there. Thank you so much for joining us.